The game of the weekend for women's lacrosse was in College Park when Maryland hosted number one Northwestern in front of a record-breaking crowd. Maryland baseball salvaged a win in walk-off fashion Sunday against Indiana, while softball fell in its final two games of the series. Maryland gymnastics concluded its season at regionals, and men's lacrosse keeps it rolling in Big Ten play. All that and more coming up on this edition of The Left Bench. just had a lot of empty possessions. So we really want to make sure that we're staying focused pitch by pitch. Welcome back to The Left Bench, brought to you by Terrapin Sports Central. I'm Matthew News. that's Alex Wooten, and Alexa, we were both at the Plex Saturday night. How electric was that record-setting crowd? I mean, Matt, 2,400 fans packed the Plex, Maryland fans hoping for what, would pro what they were hoping for was another signature Maryland women's lacrosse victory. Unfortunately for the Terps, that was not the case. Con countless turnovers and a tough Northwestern defense proved to be the difference maker. The first quarter is the battle you expect. The Terps and Wildcats go back and forth. Maryland down one and the Terps draw a penalty, but opt to hold the ball to start with possession in the second quarter and just can't convert. The Terps dominate in the circle 19 to 10, but the Wildcats force crucial turnovers. More, more possessions equals more shots on goal. Northwestern starts the third quarter with six unanswered goals. Libby May and Eloise Clevenger would add two in the fourth, but it's Northwestern with the dominant 17-9 win. The loss marks Kathy Reese's first conference loss at home in her 18 years as head coach. They came out and got three or four in a row, and then that was, you know, you give up one, we needed to answer, we didn't answer. And I think when you can stop a team's runs, it can give your team a little momentum to build off, but we gave up four in a row. Um, before we even had a look at the goal, which, which made it tough. You know, we had to kind of claw our way back at that point, and we dug ourselves in too deep of a hole. Like the women's team, number six Maryland men's lacrosse played a conference opponent this weekend. This time, it was Ohio State, and it came down to the wire. Ryan Syracuse and Eric Spanos got things rolling for Maryland, but the Buckeyes punch right back. Tied up, and it's Ohio State's Ed Sheen capitalizing on the man-up opportunity to give Ohio State the lead. But then Maryland gets Hot. Maryland scores four unanswered. Two of these come from long poles Jack McDonald and Nick Alvitti, their first of the season. The Buckeyes make a last minute push, tying the game at six with just a few minutes to play, but then enter Eric Spanos. Spanos scores four goals on the day, leading Maryland to the 8 7 win over Ohio State. Here's head coach John Tillman with more. I, I knew this would be a dogfight. We talked to the guys. We, we knew it would be a grind, um, and we just had to find a way to win, which is credit to these guys. Uh, but league games are tough, um, and it'll be tough again uh, next week. It doesn't matter who we play. They're, they're going to be tough. Everybody knows each other. March Madness is officially over, but players aren't done just yet jumping into the transfer portal. TSC's Judith Altnew is in Studio B to give us an update on what the transfer portal looks like for Maryland. Judith? Yeah, guys, there are over 900 players in both the men's and women's college basketball transfer portals, and no school is safe from a wave of departures, and that includes both Maryland squads. Let's start with Kevin Willard's team. The Terps have seen four players enter the transfer portal, with sophomores Noah Batchelor and Callum Swan Roger being the first. Freshman Jonathan Lamothe and Jamie Kaiser Jr. have since filed suit. Kaiser's departure has been the biggest surprise for the men's basketball team so far. Maryland fans had high expectations for the former four-star recruit and Virginia native. Kaiser's freshman campaign was an up-and-down one, struggling to find his groove early on. But near the end, he flashed potential, scoring double figures in five games throughout the season. Despite the departures, Willard has been active in the portal, adding two players so far. He brought in former Virginia Tech guard Rodney Rice, who was a former four-star star recruit. Rice grew up in Maryland and played high school basketball down the road at DeMatha and is now returning home. A junior has played in just eight collegiate games but averaged 7.4 points a game. He has two years of eligibility remaining and was ranked as the number 66, 66th player in the transfer, transfer portal, according to The Athletic. The other player Willard brought in is former Belmont point guard Jacoby Gillespie, who will replace Jameer Young next season. 
Gillespie is the number 13th best player in the transfer portal, according to The Athletic. During his two years at Belmont, Gillespie averaged 12.9 points per game. He's an, also a proven shooter, a place Maryland struggled with last season. Gillespie shot 38.7 from three-point range this past season and will pair nicely with Chance Stevens. He also has two years of eligibility left and gives the, player, and gives the Terps a player with 57 collegiate games under his belt. Now let's turn to Brenda Fries' squad. Fries has yet to add anyone from the transfer portal, but has had three players enter it, including glue player Faith Masonis. Masonis spent the last five years in College Park, but decided to find a new home for her sixth year of college basketball. Masonis had been a fan favorite and do-it-all player, excelling in rebounding and defense. She played 138 games as a Terp, averaging 6.0 points, 4.2 rebounds, and two assists a game. A huge loss for Freeze. The other members to leave the women's team include freshman Riley Nelson and, and Summer Bostick. Nelson is arguably the biggest loss for Maryland so far. Nelson was supposed to be a major contributor next year after recovering from her ACL injury that cut her freshman season short. The former five-star in 2022 and 2023 Maryland Gatorade Player of the Year averaged 5.1 points a game while coming off the bench this past season. Whenever team lands Nelson, we'll get a tremendous player. And guys, late Monday afternoon, freshman center Hawa Dumboya entered the transfer portal as well, becoming the fourth women's basketball player to do so. The portal is open until May 1st, so we'll see if any more Terps decide to enter and what other moves Willard and Freeze make. Back to you guys. Thank you, Judith. And you know, Matt, the transfer portal has completely changed the landscape of college basketball. I feel like every single day you're seeing either players leave programs or join new ones. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And now on the topic of incoming players, one Maryland commit put on a monster performance last Tuesday, sparking even more excitement for Maryland men's basketball and its fans. That's right, Matt. Last week, 48 of the best high school girls and boys basketball players were in Houston for the McDonald's All-American Games. Among them was five-star commit Derek Queen. Uh, great competition. Get to play around the, uh, get to play with the best and against the best to see who's really the best. And Baltimore native Derek Queen proved he is one of the best. Derek Queen. Queen was named the co-MVP of the McDonald's All-American Boys game, alongside Rutgers commit Dylan Harper. The 6'10 center was without a doubt the most productive player on the floor, leading with 23 points, 8 rebounds, 5 assists, and 3 steals. Six years. That's how long it's been since Maryland men's basketball has had a five-star recruit and McDonald's All-American, meaning fans are expecting greatness. They didn't have a, a pack. Uh, game last year because wasn't they didn't have a good season, but next year it's going to be a, di a different atmosphere. And Queen plans to be the difference. I think Maryland was a, a good fit for me because how they played and what they was lacking in, and I think I bring that to the table. Something he showed Tuesday night, and boy did Maryland basketball fans notice. With all this excitement, Queen can't wait to play back at home. And just playing back in Baltimore where a lot of people can come out to my games, friends, family, and and others and supporters. For Terrapin Sports Central, I'm Alexa Wooten. And Matt, after the game, I actually asked Queen, I said, you know, the excitement around you is an added pressure. And he said, not at all. He's just as excited. He takes one game at a time, and he really just can't wait to show Maryland what he can do next season. Yeah, and I mean, if you're a Maryland men's basketball fan, that's the type of, that's the type of mindset you want to hear from one of your new guys. You know, it wasn't the best season in year two for Willard, but, you know, he can sign April 17th, so just a couple weeks away from Derek Queen officially becoming a Maryland Terrapin. No doubt. Now don't go anywhere because when we come back, we'll take a look at Maryland Baseball's weekend series and another edition of the Cardiac Terps. We'll also recap how the Gym Terps ended their season and preview Maryland football after Baltimore Day. Because it's never too early for football. Don't go anywhere. There are 16 million children struggling with hunger in America. That's one in five daughters, sons, neighbors, and classmates who don't know where their next meal is coming from. Yet billions of pounds of good food go to waste every year. It's time we do something about it. Feeding America is a nationwide network of food banks that helps provide meals to millions of kids and families in need. Visit feedingamerica.org to help them feed even more. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. 
there are so many rewards in life. You coming into our home was one of the greatest rewards we could have ever had. You know, it took 20 years, and I got my third child, who was 17 at the time. It's so cool to watch the adult that you've become, and you really have done as much for us as you think we've done for you. Welcome back to The Left Bench, brought to you by Terrapin Sports Central. I'm Matthew News, alongside Alexa Wooten and Alexa, Maryland Gymnastics were in the Sunshine State for the NCAA Regional. Yeah, I'm at the Gym Terps. We're down in the Florida Regional with Michigan State, Towson, and Utah. Now, the Terps finished in third place with the program's second best NCAA Regional performance, a score of 196.350. Starting off on uneven bars, Sierra Condo and Alexa Rothenbuescher score 9.85. Next, Layla Hammer leads the Terps on the beam with a 9.875. Onto the floor, Rhea LeBlanc scores a 9.825. For a final push to fight number 12 seed Michigan State for second place, Emma Silverman scores a career high 9.95, breaking the program record for the highest vault score at an NCAA regional. And a big congrats to Emma on qualifying individually for nationals. Maryland baseball entered Sunday's game having lost its last four Big Ten conference games. Pitching woes were the name of the game for Maryland all weekend against Indiana, but Joey McManus was on point in Sunday's game. Kevin Keister gets things going for the Terps, driving in two runs on a fielding error. But Indiana answers right back as Devin Taylor cuts Maryland's lead in half on this solo home run. An error gives Indiana a 3-2 lead, then a base hit from Jake Stadler brings in two more runs for the Hoosiers. But you guessed it, it's time for the Cardiac Terps. In the bottom frame, Maryland evens it up at 5, then Kevin Keister laces that RBI base hit for the 6-5 walk-off Terps win. The win marks Maryland's 12th comeback win of the season, but the Terps still drop the series 2-1. Logan Barrier gets the win, he sits at 7-0 this season. Here's Matt Swope with more on the pitching performance from his crew. I was sorry. Yeah, he, he just dominated I mean, the whole game. I mean, that's a really, really good hitting team. One of the best in the conference. Like, easily the best slider we've seen all year. So, he dominated. Maryland softball seemed to be on the brink of breaking through against Illinois on Sunday, time after time. But for Lauren Karn and company, a disappointing result. Jada McFarlane got things rolling for the Terps with this two out double in the first, still scoreless. Courtney Weish was doing what she does best today on the mound, but in the next two innings, she lets two pitches get away, allowing for a pair of two-run homers to give Illinois a 4-0 lead. Weish holds her own the rest of the day, punching out 10 Illini batters, but Maryland is never able to capitalize, leaving the afternoon scoreless. Terps drop this one 4-zip and drop the series 2-1. Here's what Lauren Karn had to say after the loss. I'm confident that we're going to do a good job. We're going to um, bounce back. We're talking about just our level of focus and our preparation and things like that. So um, I'm hoping that we can do what we've been doing all season and just bouncing back after each loss. Maryland football is underway with spring practices, and the team took a pit stop up in Baltimore for something a little bigger than football. TSC's Ricky Podgorski was at Hughes Stadium at Morgan State University with more on the start of a new tradition, Baltimore Day. <laughs> Crab cakes and football, that's what Maryland does. A slogan rooted in the history of the game throughout the state. But some notable football programs want to commemorate that history in a new tradition. The University of Maryland and Morgan State football programs held practice sessions at Hughes Stadium, dubbing the event Baltimore Day. Uh, this is us paying it forward, and, and you know what a better way to do it than through the great game of football. The event created by Maryland head coach Mike Loxley and Morgan State head coach Damon Wilson allowed both teams to run separate practices on the same day and the same field. 
According to both coaches and the players, Baltimore Day made it easy for those in the area to come support the programs. Oh uh, yeah, it feels really good just to be in this area. This is a community where I feel at home. You know, a lot of people here that have love and respect for me, and these are a lot of the people that are fans that support us and you know come in to our stadium week in and week out. Both head coaches say that the practices here at Baltimore Day have built a sense of unity for the state of Maryland, a unity created through the game of football. But, uh, to get both universities here uh, in Baltimore, I mean, I think it's a great representation of what the state is about and also what the city of Baltimore is about. You know, one of the things that just jumps out to me is the passionate fan base that we have up here in Baltimore. And so for us, we've got to do all we can to continue to work to put a product on the field that where we can unify the state. Both programs continue spring practices preparing for the regular season, but both also walk away with a new tradition, a tradition built on the passion for the game. For Terrapin Sports Central, I'm Ricky Podgorski. Thanks, Ricky. Now, you see Maryland, they always want to get involved in the DMV. They go to D.C. a lot, but you never really see them go to other parts of the state like Baltimore. I mean, how great is it to see two local programs come together to celebrate the state they all love? Yeah. Now, people of the Baltimore area got to see next year's Maryland team in action at Baltimore Day. But it was NFL scouts and personnel who got to see more of the potential professional talent from last year's squad. Ricky Bodgorski was at Jones Hill House with more from Maryland Pro Day. 51 scouts and personnel of all 32 NFL teams were in attendance for Maryland football's Pro Day. Headlining the participating players was QB Talia Tagovailoa, who entered his name into the NFL draft after four years with Maryland. It's been such a great journey, and um, I was just telling Coach that I appreciate him. You know, uh, it came by so quick, you know, everything finished so, so fast. And... Defensive back Bo Braid is all over NFL mock draft boards, but no matter where he ends up, he's eager to get on the field. Well, as I've heard from, you know, social media, media, everything, it's the second round, the fifth round, so it's not, you know, I'm not really too caught up in that. You know, I'm really looking forward to, you know, getting on that field at the next level, not as much as, you know, draft day, but yeah. Along with Tagovailoa and Braid were 13 other members of the 2023 Maryland roster. Players participated in the broad jump, 40-yard dash, and respective position drills. Participants ranged from all ends of the roster, showing the trajectory of this Maryland team. Head coach Mike Loxley says that the recent success of the program is a testament to the guys testing here today for a chance to play at the next level. You know, you're going to be judged by what you do, and, and it's great what we've been able to accomplish the last three years, but we all know that it's about taking the next step. And the next step is not just as a, a collective unit, but individually. And as a developmental program, we often talk about making those incremental jumps and just being a little bit better than yesterday. Our team has embraced that, that type of work ethic, and, and I think you'll continue to see us build in this program. The NFL draft begins on April 25th, and for many of the players who tested today, the waiting game begins to hopefully hear their names called. For Terrapin Sports Central, I'm Ricky Podgorski. And thank you again, Ricky. Now, Matt, Colton Spangler, the punter for Maryland football, actually had the fastest 40-yard dash for a punter in over the last 15 years. I know. I, I saw the video, and I couldn't believe it was Colton Spangler. I mean, I saw it, and I was like, is that Lightning McQueen? <laughs> Ka-chow. But, I mean, no. I mean, punters are people, too. So, I mean, I'm not surprised at all. I mean, congrats to Colton on that record. Now, stay with us, because when we come back, we'll do a deep dive into Maryland and its relationship with the Special Olympics. And, as always, we'll crown our Turf of the Week, Pro Turf, and Top 5 plays. Don't go anywhere. I tell my son, I love you every single day. Oh. Now my dad has never said that to me. Not because he doesn't love me, but because culturally it wasn't comfortable for him. Now that he's a grandfather, he says I love you to my son every time he sees him. My advice to all the fathers out there, forget the cultural restrictions. They grow up way too fast for you to waste even a single precious moment. Hey, Mason. Hey, Mason. Got a new house. It's looking pretty cool so far. A place that I call home. I'm teaching Louise how to cook some lasagna. It only takes a spark to make a fire start.
Thank you. Let's study, please. Welcome back to the Left Bench, brought to you by Terrapin Sports Central. I'm Matthew News. That's Alexa Wooten. And don't worry, because we will get to our weekly honors in just a moment. But first, Alexa, a really amazing annual event happened right here at UMD. That's right, Matt. Sometimes a basketball game isn't about the wins, the losses, or any stats. Instead, it's just about the opportunity to play the game. TSC's Alex Gary has more on what Special Olympics Maryland's annual basketball championship means to some players. Basically, when I first started, um, it was hectic for me, and I was all nervous and shaking, and my teammates said, like, don't worry about it, you get used to it. When Dallas Boone joined the Frederick County Special Olympics basketball team, he didn't yet have the confidence in his game, but he did have confidence that his teammates would be there for him despite any challenges. My, my teammates like family to me, and uh, we all love each other. Just three years later, Boone is competing alongside hundreds of other athletes, all participating in the annual Special Olympics Basketball Championship here at the University of Maryland. Athletes from all over Maryland arrive to compete, with the main goal being the opportunity to showcase their talent. I think everybody is capable of doing anything they want to. They just need somebody to push them in that right direction. And that push has led to the tournament expanding each year with more fans and more athletes. But with the growth of the game, Special Olympics Maryland's message about what the games are about stays true. That was also good to see because they wanted to win, but that was not the number one priority. The priority was having fun and being supportive of each other out there on the field or the court. But Dallas Boone doesn't let the bright lights of the state championship stop him from playing the game he loves and playing it the right way. To be honest, I don't wait, I don't pay attention to that. I just played the game and um and talk to my teammates and and always keep a smile on my face when I play. For Terrapin Sports Central, I'm Alex Gary. Thank you, Alex. And you know, Matt, my high school actually had a program. It was called Basketball Club, and students were actually able to practice with the varsity team. And I mean, how can you not love being a part of something like that? I know. I mean, at my high school, we held a Special Olympics, you know, on our football field, and I did it all four years. I was a mentor every year. It was one of the best days of the year, just being able to interact with those athletes and, you know, share their talents. It was just a truly special day. I mean, that's awesome. And if you want to get involved with Special Olympics Maryland, you can sign up at www.somd.com to see volunteering opportunities. All right, Alexa, it's now time to name our Terp of the Week. And, men's, and as men's lacrosse picked up another Big Ten win, our Terp of the Week goes to Eric Spanos. Spanos torched Ohio State's defense on Saturday, scoring half of Maryland's goals and matching a season-high goal tally with four. The junior midfielder scored the Terps' last two goals in the fourth quarter, less than a minute apart, putting them up too late. He added an assist to lead all players with five points. Maryland held on to its lead to earn its second conference win in a row. Congrats to Eric on being crowned our Terp of the Week. From the field to the court, a former Maryland men's basketball star put on quite the performance despite playing limited minutes. Our pro Terp this week is Indiana Pacers' Jalen Smith. In Indiana's game against Brooklyn, Smith came off the bench for an efficient 16 minutes. The 6'9 powered forward grabbed himself a double-double with 17 points and 10 rebounds. Not to mention he went 7 for 11 from the field, helping his team to victory over the Nets 133-111. to Congrats to Jalen on being crowned our Pro Terp. All right, Matt, it's time for my favorite part of the show, Top 5, Get Us Started. All right, I'm going to get us started on the softball diamond with number 5, Madison Runyon, the second baseman. Web Gem gets down and gets it and force out at the plate. I mean, what an elite play by Madison Runyon to get the lead runner at the plate and keep Maryland in it. Now it's time for Maryland's individual qualifier for nationals, Emma Silverman, with a score at 9.95. Let's see that one more time. Round off, full twisting, back handspring, and she sticks it. What a performance by Silverman. At number three, we're going to go to CQ Stadium. Jack McDonald, grip it and rip it. Top shelf, beating the Ohio State goalie to help Maryland beat Ohio State and keep rolling in Big Ten play. Now for Kevin Keister's RBI single walk-off to beat Indiana. 
Keister struggled all weekend in the series, but made it count when it mattered. Big time hit to avoid the sweep. And at number one, we're going to go to the Plex. It had to be Eloise Clevenger. BTB behind the back. The game didn't end the way Maryland Women's Lacrosse wanted it to end, but they at least leave with a top play this week. And I mean, Matt, you know how much I love watching Eloise Clevenger play lacrosse. You think, what else can she do? And she shows you every single game. I know. I mean, usually she's dishing out assists, but, you know, she has that in her back pocket as well, the goal scoring ability. It's just insane to watch her play lacrosse. 100%. Yep. And that's going to do it for this edition of The Left Bench. Ben Wolf and Andrew McBride will be behind the desk Thursday to tell you everything you need to know about Maryland baseball. Be sure to keep up with all of Terrapin Sports Central's coverage on X, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, and online at terrapinsportscentral.com. We'll see you next time.